we're coming towards the end of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. So it makes sense to make the most of what's there before FIFA 22 is released and we go through this whole cycle again. Between now and the end of FIFA 21, I have got a few things that I'm planning to do before never playing Foot 21 ever again. Before I do get into this video though, if you enjoy the content here and want to see a bit more from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Every single week, we upload tutorials which give you the best advice for FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. And it will be soon moving on to FIFA 22 news and then eventually when FIFA 22 is released, FIFA 22 tutorials. So if you do want to see all of that, then make sure you are following the channel. And getting back into to the video. At the time of recording this video, we haven't got an official FIFA 22 release date, but we know it'll most likely be releasing towards the end of September or the beginning of October. This gives us just a couple months of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team before we go through this whole cycle all over again. It's also fair to say that these next few months is not the most exciting time of the year for Ultimate Team. There's not as many people playing this game as most are just fed up with the gameplay. So in this video, I got some things that you can do to spice everything up. These are things that I'll be looking to do over the next couple of months just to keep things interesting. The first thing is to build out different types of teams. Chances are, if you're a player that's been playing FIFA 21 since the release and you're still playing to this day, you are a competitive player. You've been using some of the best players in the game, such as icons, team of the years, team of the seasons, and many other types of special cards. You've wanted to have the best team so that you're able to compete within the likes of division rivals, maybe even foot champions, so that you can get the best rewards. And by getting those best rewards, that will add even more coins to your account where you can buy even better players so that you could do better the following week. Week. This is how it goes for 90% of the year when playing Ultimate Team, but as we're coming towards the end, it makes sense for you not to be as invested and as interested in the coins and building out your club. Because at this point, it doesn't really matter. Because of the market crash from Team of the Season, players are at an all-time low. So if you have been playing this game since day one, you should have a decent amount of coins into your account and you should be able to buy the majority of players out there, with the exception of possibly the most desirable cards such as the high rated icons or even some of the other high rated special cards. But either way, you should be sitting on a decent amount and at this point it makes no sense for you to actually compete because what you're getting now is massively devalued. You can go into foot champions and you can get some very good packs, but the chances are the players that you get from those packs will not really pay for anything. Unless you did get someone absolutely amazing, but you've got a very low chance of that. So at this stage, it makes sense for you to build out different teams and just have fun with what you're doing. Look at players that you've never been able to play with before because they never suited the meta of ultimate team. Now you can actually take those players and build a completely different team around them and see what's good about it and see what's bad about it. If you enjoy that team, then you can carry on playing with it. If you don't enjoy it, you can sell it on and build something completely different the following week. One thing that I've always liked to do at this time of the year is build the best possible teams. So this could be the best possible England team, where you'll take all the highest rated special cards that are currently within the game that have the English nationality and just put them all into one team. This will be a mix of different types of icons, potentially some team of the seasons in there, any types of high rated informs, whatever you can find, whatever's the highest rated play within that position, you build and put it into a team and see how it plays. And you could do this with any type of nationality or any type of club team. There's also a huge amount of people that like to do past and present teams. So they could look at Man United and build a team with some of the players that are currently playing there, some of the icons and some of those that are still within the game, but they just play with other teams. It may lead to teams with very bad chemistry dependent on the players that you add, but you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. On the complete opposite side of this, we move on to point number two, which is building your dream team. This is for those players that may have been playing this game for a long time, but never had the coins to buy the players that they wanted to buy. The good thing about the team in the season market crash is that a lot of these players have dropped massively in value, making it a lot easier for you to be able to reach that price range. So you could actually go over to your concept squads and start putting together a team, a team that you would like to have before the end of FIFA 21. And everything that you do from this point to the end of FIFA 21 is all about trying to build that team and get the coins together to buy it. Now the chances are if you are a player that has only just started this game and you're building a concept squad that includes Pele, R9, Ronaldinho, Messi, Ronaldo, loads of team of the years, maybe some team of the seasons, it's unlikely for you to get it unless you are putting a lot of FIFA points into the game or you're buying coins. 
you can easily look at the amount of coins that you have, check the market to see different player prices, work out how much time you're willing to put into the game every single week or every single month, and just try to figure out what would be the best possible team that you could build between now and the end of FIFA 21. This is something a lot of players like to do because they like to look back on the teams that they've managed to be able to build within previous FIFAs. So even though FIFA 22 is around the corner, as soon as it releases, we'll all be sure to play it. But at some point, that game's going to get boring. And that's when players like to look back on previous FIFAs and actually play on the previous Ultimate Team with the teams that they've managed to build. So building your dream team now actually keeps you occupied between now and the end of FIFA 21, but it could also pay out big way in the future when you want to look back on a previous Ultimate Team. At number 3, we have the SBC Completionist. There's loads of different SBCs that have been released throughout the year and there will continue to be SBCs between now and the end of FIFA 21. If you have got an abundance of coins in your club, maybe you've also got a lot of players within your club, you can actually use all of that to build some of the SBCs that are currently available. The good thing is as we are coming towards the end of FIFA 21, there will be a time where EA releases a lot of the SBCs that have been expired and re-release them again just so players get a second chance of buying them. So if there was a specific type of player that you wanted to buy at the beginning of Ultimate Team, maybe it was a player of the month. Maybe it was something from a foot freeze promo. Maybe it was something completely different. But unfortunately, you weren't able to buy them because you didn't have the players to complete the SBC and you didn't have the coins to buy those players. Well, now you've got a second chance to do it if EA were to release these SBCs again. You can use the club that you've built up until this point to now go through a lot of these other SBCs. There are still, of course, a lot of SBCs that are still available, such as all the icons that are there. These can be completed at any point. And you can start working on these SBCs just to kill time for when EA release all the other SBCs that you're wanting. But this just gives you a second chance to buy players that unfortunately you missed out on earlier in the year. And as soon as you bought these players, this could also link into the two previous points. Where you build different types of teams around them or potentially even build your dream team. And number four, you can start a completely new account. This is something that I have already started and I've actually started it three times already. I have made three completely new accounts two on playstation and one on xbox and this benefits me in two different ways the first way is by going through the challenge i have started a completely new account and that has led to me having a bronze team and slowly building up to a rare gold team and even though that would be a very good start if this was the beginning of FIFA 21, but it's not. So every time I go into Division Rivals or any type of online game, I come up to absolutely godly team with loads of different team of the seasons, team of the years, icons, whatever type of special card that's overpowered, it is part of these teams. So this has become a challenge and it's so much more of a challenge compared to me just playing on my normal account that has a fairly decent team. It also feels more rewarding when I have these rare gold teams and I'm actually able to beat my opponent that has an absolutely godly team. The second benefit from all of this is that you'll have extra accounts come FIFA 22. Now I have already done a video on this talking about getting accounts ready for the FIFA 22 web app and that you can create multiple so that you have multiple loyalty packs once the FIFA 22 web app is released unfortunately you can't just create accounts and then just leave it at that they need to be active accounts by playing anywhere between 50 to 100 games and all of this needs to be done before mid-august because that's when ea have a cutoff point if any accounts are created late august or even beginning of september unfortunately you will not have access to the fifa 22 web app before the game is released you'll actually need to wait for the game to release and buy the game and then play 50 to 100 matches to gain access so by starting a completely new account, you get to challenge yourself now, which keeps things interesting, whilst also it benefits you in the future when new FIFAs have been released. And then the final thing on my list is to have a huge club pack opening. Now this is not something that I'm doing right this second. I'm actually trying to build up my club right now, going through all the four previous points, and with any coins left over just a couple days or a couple weeks before the FIFA 22 release, I'm going to be doing a huge pack opening. By the end of the year, coins will be absolutely worthless on this account. So it's actually pointless me keeping any of the players. Now there is a chance in the future that I'll come back to FIFA 21 just to check my past teams and actually play a few games just to go and spice things up a bit whilst it's dead within FIFA 22 or even a future FIFA. 
But even if that was to happen and I was to come back to this game, chances are the coins that I'll have in my accounts won't be able to buy any of the players because the market will just be completely empty. There's going to be a very small amount of people that's actually playing FIFA 21 Ultimate Team when other FIFAs have been released. So it's very slim that I'll be able to buy the players that I was wanting to buy. So instead, I'm going to be doing a huge pack opening towards the end of this year. That way I can have loads of players into my account so that if I was to come back in the future, I don't have to search the transfer market. I do just have my account and I can build loads of different types of teams and try out different types of things way in the future. But even if I wasn't to come back to FIFA 21 in the future and I just carried on playing whatever game was active at the time, then it still makes sense for me to do a massive pack opening because I'm never coming back to this game. I might as well seek value out of the stuff that I have, which is having fun by opening packs to see what I can get, rather than just leaving the coins and leaving this account to move on to the next one. So between now and the last couple of weeks of FIFA 21, I'm doing all four of the previous points. Building loads of different teams, starting to work towards a dream team, being a bit of an SBC completionist, and I have already started new accounts. But whilst I'm going through all of this, I'm going to be building up loads of different coins by going through foot champions, division rivals with these different types of teams. Maybe I'm able to make profit from some of these SBCs. And I'm also going to be doing loads of trade methods as that is the focus point of this channel. So I will have around two to three million coins left over. That will be a two to three million coin pack opening just to end this year. But anyway, guys, those are five different things that you could do before the end of FIFA 21. If you have any other suggestions or things that you're doing currently within the game, then feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see you.